episode of Adventures in Welding. I'm Paul. Thanks for joining me. Adventures in Welding is brought to you by our friends at Eastwood. Check them out for all of your welding needs. What we're going to look at today is doing autogenous butt welds in stainless and mild carbon steel. So one of the first things I'm doing here is just uh, using some alcohol to make sure that our stainless is good and clean and ready to be welded. We're going to be using a um, one inch thick aluminum backing plate. Also going to wipe that off in, alum <laughs> in aluminum. Yeah. Also going to wipe that off with some alcohol and make sure everything is set. Now this stainless steel I'm using is 304 stainless steel, which is an Austin Tittick grade, non-magnetic, and the recommended weld material for it is uh, 309 if you're using stainless steel, mild steel, or 308 if you're using stainless steel to stainless steel. But one of the great uh, properties of stainless steel is that its low thermal heat transfer makes it good for fusion welding. So if you're using stainless somewhere in one of your restoration products and you can get a good tight butt joint. I mean there's a couple little tiny cracks in there, nothing more than I'm going to say five thousandths of an inch. That shouldn't be a big deal. Then you can get a good fusion weld not using any, fu any filler whatsoever. And that's what we're going to do today. So let me get set up and we'll get on it. All right, we've got our piece set up for welding here. We've got our two pieces butt jointed very tightly together. We're using a, the piece of aluminum as our backing strip. Here's my number nine torch with a number six cup, a 1 16th inch, 2% thoriated electrode sharpened to a nice long point. Let's set up the machine and get ready to go. All right, we're using the Eastwood TIG 200 today. This is about 60 thousandths stainless, so we're gonna put our power on 60 amps. I'm gonna use about a 0.4 second pre-flow, a seven second post-flow. And since we're using DC power, our clearance, cleaning effect, balance, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to set it on zero. We'll be using panel control for power. Now, I don't have the uh, trigger from the torch plugged in here. I do have the foot control plugged in, but I'll only be using it as an on-off switch. Turn the power on here. Make sure we've got our argon flow. We're flowing about 15 CFM of argon and we are ready to go. Okay, I'm ready to tack this together and I'm gonna use the speed tacking method. So what I've done is I've turned up my power to twice what I'm gonna to use to weld it. So we're looking at 110 amps. Now the number nine torch is only rated for 100 amps, but for putting in a few, a few of these speed tacks, it shouldn't be a problem. The idea is to get the tungsten very close and give it just a blast of power to tack it in place. So here we go. All right, as you can see now, we've got our tacks in place and we're ready to weld it out.
All right, there is our completed autogenous butt weld of the stainless steel. And you can see how quickly I got through that. With the machine set for 60 amps DC, we lit up here, drew a puddle, and got moving at a good clip. What we're looking for here is a nice nickel to salmon color. That's about as dark as you want to go. You don't really want to see any blues or any purples. Moving quick, keeping the heat input low is the key to welding stainless steel. If you do those two things, you can, can keep you can keep your distortion at a minimum. As you can see here, and produce nice flat clean welds with no oxidation on the backside and you'll be ready to go. We're going to do the same thing with some low carbon steel. Since we're doing the TIG process here, we want to make sure that everything is clean as can be. So we'll hit that with the wire wheel, and then clean it up with some alcohol. Acetone works better, but if you don't have any acetone on hand, alcohol works just fine. And you can see the contaminants that I pulled off. Once again, we'll come over to the Eastwood TIG 200, turn it up to about 110 amps, and we'll get our speed tax done. position start over
All right, here's our mild steel autogenous butt weld. We started from this end, moving along. Stop to reposition here. Stop to reposition here. And finished up over here. As you can see, we have a little bit of distortion, but not bad. Well, as you can see, folks, we've got our couple of nice autogenous butt welds in the stainless steel and in the mild steel. This is an excellent process to use if you're taking thin material. Both of these are about 18 gauge. Keep in mind this works only for steel and stainless steel. It does not work for aluminum because of aluminum's hot, short cracking tendencies. Well, that's it for this episode of Adventures in Welding. I want to thank you for joining me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our friends at Eastwood for all your welding needs, including the incredible Eastwood TIG 200 ACDC TIG welder. And until I see you again, go make some sparks.